as I'm going through this show, if you guys have any questions, uh, you know, make sure that you let us uh, let us know on Facebook, Doctors Warren. That's D R S W A R R E N on Facebook. And uh, again, you can like and follow our page, uh, and you can make sure again if you have any questions about like family or friends, uh, you can ask on there as well. During the commercial breaks, I actually go through extra information. So again, uh, definitely make sure that you jump on there. Doctors Warren on Facebook. Uh, ask your questions as we go throughout the show. So one of the things that I've been getting asked quite a bit in the office lately uh, is about uh, is about sinuses and allergy issues. And so uh, again, which is kind of interesting because it's it's kind of the end of the summer. I don't normally see um, in the past. I don't normally see a ton of of sinus and allergy issues right now. Uh, but right, but this year, I mean, it's been crazy. At least here in Chattanooga, we've seen a lot of people suffering with, uh, you know, sinus headaches and and kind of, uh, you know, runny noses and 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 all kinds of different stuff as far as uh, you know sinuses and allergies uh, go. So I want to go through that a little bit because I think this is uh, something that if you live in the Chattanooga area, you know, you realize that I, I'm like, man, I. I should have started like an allergy clinic because how many people that have uh, sinus and allergy issues? Um, and I'm sure it's the same way, you know, kind of throughout the, the South, uh, it seems to be that way at least. So I think this is something that'll help people right now. And I wanna make sure that, that again, uh, if you guys have any specific questions about it to let me know as we go through it. So um, let's see, somebody on Facebook says, Sarah said, all of these West Coast fires are killing my sinus. Man, I can't even imagine, you know, if you live, you know, if you're watching live on, on Facebook and you live near the West Coast, like Sarah, man, I, we're praying for you guys. I know that's probably, uh, I can't imagine going through all that right now. That sounds uh, absolutely wild. You know, I, we have a, a mentor that lives in California that, that practices there. And she was showing us, uh, we were on a conference call the other day and she was showing us the, the sky. And I mean, it's mind blowing uh, just how orange the sky was, just absolutely crazy. So we're praying for you guys, uh, you know, hang in there and, and man, if you, if you have to get, get out of there, evacuate, whatever you gotta do. Uh, and we'll pray that, that your house and everything like that and family's okay, so. Um, but anyway, so sinus and allergy issues. This is, there's a few things that can lead to, uh, you know, big problems with, with this. So number one that I find in the office as far as like chronic sinus issues go are usually the fact that they have their own source of mold um, actually in their, uh, in their sinus cavity. So they have their own source of mold uh, in their sinus cavity and that's usually called, if you're getting an official diagnosis, it's usually called Marcon's. But that being said, when we look at, when we look at like your own source of mold in the sinus cavity, what it does is it can create kind of this chronic uh, breeding ground for all different types of microorganisms, including mold uh, that, that builds up over the years. I know there's like a, like a, you know, a world famous ENT in Atlanta uh, that really all he does on a regular basis is remove uh, basically you know mold from the frontal sinus cavity and so this can be a big deal and especially here in Chattanooga where we live we know that this can be a big problem because again it's, it's a very like forested area you know there's all kinds of greenery it, it, it just maintains a ton of moisture um, if you actually look at different neighborhoods in in Chattanooga I mean it's loaded uh, you can see all kinds of older houses that, that are loaded with mold and mildew uh, and so again we can build that up in our, in our na nasal cavity and so one of the questions that we ask on our um, on our initial paperwork in the office is it, when somebody comes in is is did they live in a house where they think that there were there was mold I don't even ask the question did you go to school in a building that had mold because according to the EPA uh, about 80 to 82 percent of our schools across the country the ones that your kids are going to right now have an underlying mold issue and so mold can absolutely rob the body and the brain of, of not only energy, uh, but also it can d damage and destroy your immune system. And so if you have that going on in your actual sinus and nasal cavity, no wonder these problems continue to come back over and over again. So you just, it's something to be aware of 
uh, as far as you know when you are trying to actually address um, that issue. So that's number one. That's the number one thing that I see here in, in Chattanooga as far as chronic sinus issues. Number two is actually something called a histamine reaction. Now histamine, uh, this is an important one to know because some people, I don't know if, if you're listening to this, if you've ever done like a, you know, some type of genetic testing, um, I don't recommend doing like 23andMe or something like that because of all of the security issues and selling your information and everything like that. I, I do not recommend doing that one. Um, but you know, if you've done genetic testing in the past, and you were able to kind of break it down. I do recommend if you've done genetic testing, you know, pay the, I think it's like 40 bucks and run it through something called Stratagene, which is, uh, which is um, uh, Dr. Ben Lynch's website. And he's the one that wrote Dirty Genes, which I think was uh, really a groundbreaking book in the form of how to optimize, you know, certain gene mutations and gene SNP. So, but anyway, you can actually have, you know, a specific genetic SNP that makes you more vulnerable to histamine. So you actually, uh, you can have a, a what's called a dirty DAO or DAO, so dirty DAO, which is an enzyme that actually helps to break down histamine. And so if you don't have uh, you know, a proper amount of that DAO, then you're not gonna be able to have a proper uh, histamine reaction. And again, uh, be able to kind of uh, be able to mitigate, right, those, those histamine reactions. So um, again, here's what's really cool though. There are solutions to each one of these. So as I'm going through these, we're going to kind of start off with the main problems and then we're going to make sure that we go into the solutions as well uh, as we go throughout the show. Okay, so don't worry, I will hit those um, again. So, so far we said you can have your own mold source, uh, which can be classified as Marcons, M-A-R-C-O-N-S. Um, and there is a way that you can test for that. It's almost like uh, it's kind of like uh, you know, almost like the the COVID test where you have to like you know it feels like they're basically sticking a Q-tip up your brain to see you know to see what's going on there. Um, or you can just you can just kind of like, you know be consistent and work through it uh, without really testing too. And then the second one is histamine reaction. So having too much of a histamine reaction, um, which can also be related to the gut as well, which we'll dive into. Um, so that's two. Number three can actually be because of certain food sensitivities. So food sensitivities that your immune system is reacting to that presents as sinus and allergy issues. So it can present very, very similar. This is something that I saw personally uh, in my life where you know I suffered with basically, it looked like sinus and allergy problems you know, since I was a kid. I saw, you know, I mean, it was bad. Like when I was a kid, I, I was literally on all different types of medication. I tried them all, man. Claritin, you know, Claritin D, Allegra, what were the other ones? Um, you know, all of all of the different ones. I mean, I did the, the whole, you know, um, nasal sprays and everything like that, the allergy shots, you know, I tried it all. And I mean, it was bad. It was almost like pretty much every day of my life, I would wake up with uh, you know stuffy nose and and you know probably two to three times a month a sore throat and so I just thought that that was life and and come to find out you know it was two different reasons number one the the biggest reason I think was was because of food sensitivities and so the food sensitivities that I found that I was the most vulnerable to was cow's milk so uh, now granted it was not you know none of the cow's milk products that I was using at the time growing up and, and even uh, into college were were like raw milk or anything like that I mean it was just straight you know conventional pasteurized homogenized milk um, you know cheese everything that that basically I was consuming had some type of, of dairy in it um, that was not coming from a high quality source. And so for me, that was a huge one. So when I started changing my health and I cut out conventional cow's milk dairy, I mean, it was like, it was like a game changer. It was like going from night to day. Um, and, and again, I was able to start working through that. Now, I will say about 23 years old is when I did my first, like I did an actual food sensitivity test and I found out, uh, man, I had uh, probably 40 to 45 different food sensitivities. I did the big, the big like Cyrex, um, you know, kind of panel where it looked at so many different foods and herbs and spices and everything. And I had like, something like 40 or 45 different food sensitivities. 
um, but still my highest ones were uh, casein and lactose and it was it was it was cow's milk dairy was my highest one uh, you know cheese that was a big one too so so again when when I started to cut those things out it took time but then when I was able to retest later um, again like now now if you look at like a food sensitivity test with me the last one I did which was probably about a year and a half ago now and and again I had none Right? Because you can work on healing the gut and down-regulating the, the inflammation and the problem, which is actually in the gut itself. So uh, just because you have a food sensitivity does not mean that that's something that you have to live with forever. Um, now, I still choose not to, to consume uh, you know, conventional dairy, and I choose you know, really not to consume cow's milk at all um, unless, it's, uh, unless it's butter, unless it's grass-fed butter. And that's the only type of cow's milk dairy that I consume on a regular basis. So, um, but according to like food sensitivity tests, I'd probably be fine if I did take it. I just know that my body usually does better if I don't. So um, that's a third one, right? That can lead to, um, you know, issues like in the sinus cavities, in the nasal uh, area and everything like that, which is why I always recommend especially for people that suffer with like something like seasonal allergies, I always recommend like, especially during those times, cut out like cow's milk dairy, just completely cut it out. Uh, you know, and if you, if you gotta have your milk and if you gotta have that, like go more towards like goat's milk or go more towards like sheep's milk uh, and like sheep's milk cheese, goat's milk cheese, you know, yogurts, those type of things. Rather than uh, rather than actually going through uh, something like like cow's milk dairy, so those are the top three that I see. Uh, that doesn't mean those are the only ones, uh, but those are at least the top three problems that I see with chronic sinus and allergy issues. That again are just really on a regular basis, at least uh, from what I see in our clinic, from what I saw in my life. I mean, this can literally change your entire life. Like when I was getting things like headaches and migraines and all kinds of problems, you know, because of the medication I was on, because every day you wake up with like a sore throat or every day you wake up with a stuffy nose and a headache, like those things aren't fun. And it literally changes the way that you react uh, within your life. So uh, even though we can, we can kind of brush off sinus and allergy problems, I mean, it can literally be a life changer. So again, top three, and we'll make sure that we go over the solutions as well. I got to go on a quick break. Um, but as always, if you want to check us, uh, check us out even more guys, go to drswarren.com. That's D R S W A R R E N.com. Um, and you can actually, uh, you know, go on there. You can read some of our blog posts. We actually just did a new blog post on uh, kids and some of the ways that you can actually prepare their body for at home learning. So we talked about blue light blocking glasses. We talked about some different biohacks that you can do with your kids. Um, so again, that is on our website along with other blog posts. You can check out videos from there, guys. You can go to our YouTube channel, uh, Doctors Warren, and watch some of that. Make sure that you subscribe to that. We've got some really cool stuff coming out in the next few weeks. So I'm really, really excited about that. So again, just get connected. You know, sometimes it doesn't mean that you have to just come into my clinic um, or, or that, you know, you've got to be a virtual patient of mine. Uh, again, guys, we've got so many resources out there where you can start wherever you need to start and you can advance it as you go. Uh, we just want to be a, a major resource for you guys. So again, doctorswarren.com, you can go there. If you are somebody in Chattanooga that wants an appointment and you want to come in and see us, uh, by all means, you can also go on doctorswarren.com and you can schedule an appointment there. Uh, or you can give the girls a call. Uh, that number is 423 362 five three six zero and again guys this is wellness radio i'll see you guys right after the break all right guys good morning good morning casey good morning guys um so sarah thanks for the comment again we're we are praying for you guys i hope you guys are doing okay um out there on the west coast um, so sinus and allergy issues, some of the things that, that I think uh, a, a little bit more uh, you know, advanced to really check to make sure that, that aren't creating some issues. I recommend if you're somebody that suffers with like some sinus and allergy issues, uh, you know, even getting something like the cranial bones checked, the jaw, right? So checking the jaw to see how it is, the shape of the jaw. Guys, I'll tell you right now, that's a whole area of health uh, that we've really taken a deep dive into lately is looking at how epigenetically, right, our jaw shapes are changing. Like our kids' entire jaw shapes are changing based on the lack of nutrients 
in nutrient density in the mom's diet um, and the grandmother's diet, the great grandmother's diet. So we're seeing that kind of trickle down, um, but also too, um, as well as looking at like, uh, and you guys have probably seen this if you have kids, you know how many kids now that come into our office, babies that come into our office that have things like lip ties, tongue ties, buccal ties, um, you know, and on the sides and seeing that literally changes the shape of the jaw, the airway, the upper palate, which can also affect the sinuses and the nasal cavity. So again, that's a, that's a more advanced place to look for. So, you know, again, if you've kind of tried all the other things that, that I recommended there, you know, if you're like, no, you know what, I know that it's not a mold issue. I've never been exposed to mold, never really been around it. You know, I've had my, you know, my histamine levels checked. Uh, you know, I, I don't have, you know, an issue with my DAO, um, you know, on genetic testing. I also know that it's not a food sensitivity. Um, you know, I've cut out dairy. I've tried that. You know, then you co you have to go into more advanced things and say, okay, well, why, right? Maybe it's a structural issue with the jaw. Maybe that's something that you need to get checked out. And you can see somebody like a myofunctional therapist who is literally trained in looking at the shape of the jaw and then how to reshape it. You know, uh, one of the things that we're gonna be doing with uh, our kids is something called Vivos, which is an appliance to actually, it basically uh, helps to reset the upper palate. Um, again, making sure that that is where it needs to be. And it also helps to, to uh, again, kind of evenly distribute and widen the jaw so that, so that they have plenty of room there. I know a couple things. Number one, it's gonna help with airway, right? So uh, maybe you're somebody that suffers with like, uh, you know, sleep apnea or snoring, uh, which one of the ways you can tell that is if you stick out your tongue or if you have your spouse stick out their tongue and if you see what's called a cauliflower tongue or if you see where literally the tongue presses so hard against the teeth uh, that it creates little indents in the, in the actual tongue, that means you are not getting enough air into the body when you are sleeping and you need to get that checked and you need to get that fixed because if you're not getting enough oxygen in, that is going to affect your body overall. So we really, really need to make sure that that is not an issue, okay? So again, that's a little bit more advanced, but I do think that that's something that's important to check out uh, for sure. So we're about to go live, so hang on one second. All right, guys, welcome back to Wellness Radio. I am your health expert, Dr. Nathan Warren. Um, I am here talking about today um, just some of the most important things and most, uh, most uh, I would say, most common questions I get clinically, at least right now, kind of over the last couple of weeks. Um, and really, that's been sinus and allergy issues. So just as a very, very quick recap, if you are just now tuning into our show, I went over some of the top reasons why you can have an issue with chronic sinus and allergy issues. Number one, it can be a mold issue where you can actually have mold spores uh, and, and fungal balls actually growing in the nasal cavity and the frontal sinus there. Um, number two, it can be a histamine reaction. So you can have an issue with the DAO. Uh, and, and again, that enzyme that helps to break down histamine. Number three, uh, it can be an issue with a food sensitivity. Specifically, what I find a lot of is, is cow's milk dairy, uh, conventional cow's milk dairy. Um, and then one of the things I talked about on Facebook um, is a couple advanced areas like looking at the jaw shape. Uh, and those type of things. So uh, again, these are gonna be our, your most common problems and reasons for, for chronic sinus and allergy issues, all right? And so here's the steps that I would take. So number one, let's kind of dive into the first issue with mold. Like, so if you have an issue with mold spores in the nasal cavity, which again, at least in our area here in Chattanooga, with how kind of dense all the vegetation is and, and how much uh, you know diversity of plants and, and trees and everything like that, uh, this is a big, big issue, um, is number one, I would make sure that I'm irrigating my sinuses on a daily basis. So you've gotta be consistent with this. All right, this is not just using a neti pot every now and then when you're not, when you're not feeling well. Instead, you actually have to irrigate um, with, with a pretty, with, with a much higher force than, uh, than a neti pot will actually do. So I think using something like a sinugator uh, would be a really, really good one that you could use. I think it's like 20 or 25 bucks 
Um, if you jump on like, uh, you know, Amazon or if you go, go to like Walgreens or CVS or Target. So it's not very expensive, uh, but again, it, it irrigates out the canal, right? So it's more of a jet force that irrigates out, uh, irrigates out the canal. And you can use a combination of things. Like you can use a combination of like a saline solution, you know, make sure that when you're looking at your saline solution, that it's not, you know, loaded with a bunch of toxins and crap. Because I mean, if you look at products, I mean, it'll blow your mind how ridiculous some of these products are out there where it's literally should be something like salt and water and they add, you know, fragrances or crap to it, which they shouldn't at, at all. Like, let me give you a quick example that has nothing to do with, uh, you know, nothing to do with the, the irrigation of the, the sinus canal, but I had a patient that came in, uh, I think it was on Wednesday, uh, and she works at a school, and so she had forgot her water for the day, and, and forgot her lunch and everything, so what she usually brings, um, and so she, she had to eat uh, what was at the cafeteria, and what was crazy is, you know, they give the kids a choice, either milk or juice, so when she looked at the milk, which again, this blows my mind. Usually things about nutrition do not blow my mind anymore because I know the, the stupidity and the craziness that's out there. But on the milk, the second ingredient, which first raised a big red flag for me because you know why in the world would there even be more than one ingredient in milk, right? Like, I mean, shouldn't the, the only ingredient be milk? But she said the second ingredient in the milk that they were giving out to kids was liquid sugar. That's literally what it says on the, on the actual thing. As soon as she's going to bring it in next week and I'm going to post it on our Facebook page, but it says liquid sugar on it. Like how ridiculous do we have to be as a society where we think, you know what? I think it's probably a good idea for our kids. It's probably going to be really, really you know, healthy for our kids. If we give them milk that has more than one ingredient and literally the second ingredient is liquid sugar. And then some of these kids, they drink that, they go to class, they act up, and then their teachers are gonna go to their parents and go to the you know guidance counselors. Next thing you know, this kid is on ADD and ADHD medication. Like what kind of flipping world do we live in right now where that is an okay thing to do? Like that absolutely drives me insane. Like if you are out there and you, you know, you know somebody that, that, you know, is some type of nutritionist or dietitian or, you know, doctor that thinks that that is proper nutrition. I mean, you need to call them out because that is absolutely insanity. I would love to meet somebody who actually thinks that that is good and fit for human consumption, period. Because that is absolutely nuts, and we're destroying our kids' bodies, and we're destroying their brains, and then we wonder why you know they can't they can't pay attention in class. Are you kidding me? Like they just drink liquid sugar? Like what the heck? Uh, but anyway, that's that's a sidebar. But but that ticks me off. I can't believe it. Uh, you know, it's it's unbelievable that we we're, we're like ah, you know, no big deal. It's just our kids. You know, it's just the future of this country. It's just the future of the world. Uh, you know, it's just that just this this kid that you invest literally, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars into, you know, for them to grow up healthy and, and be this, you know, this uh, amazing person in society. But no, no big deal. We'll just give them that crap and and destroy their brain and their body all at the same time. And for those of you that think that liquid sugar, like in a kid's milk, is like something they can just run and burn off. Dude, no way. You were destroying their hormones uh, early on. So anyway, sidebar. But all that to be said, I would go back to what I was talking about. Make sure that the things you pick out have proper ingredients in it, okay? So uh, again, if you were going to irrigate the sinus canals, do like a good saline solution. And here's the, here's the really important part. I would use something like uh, an organic orange, like essential oil that you can actually put in there. There's one called Agrumax, A-G-R-U-M-A-X, that you can mix with that saline solution and be consistent. You're gonna do it at least once a day. I would prefer doing it like once in the morning, once in the evening, and you're gonna be consistent for at least six months as you're irrigating out the canal. Now, that only takes you like literally a couple minutes a day to do it, but what you'll start to see is over time, that's gonna help to kill those mold spores and irrigate that out, right? Um, now, I did have, um, I had a patient on Friday, so yesterday, 
that came in that used to be a surfer and he would talk, he talked about how, you know, when he was surfing all the time, like he very rarely ever had any sinus and allergy issues. And he's like, it was because I was always, you know, when I would fall or when I would go into the ocean, like it was like, I pretty much walked around all day with, you know, with like, you know, a saline solution in my sinuses. And he's like ocean water, you know, kind of dripping from my nose. He's like, but it was all clear. Like I never had any issues with it. And I'm like, yeah, that's because of all the, all the salt and all the saline solution was clearing you out. That's why so many people feel so good when they go to, you know, around the ocean. They're like, oh man, I can breathe really, really well. Well, you're breathing in again, that, that saline solution, which is really clearing out the nasal cavity and the sinuses. Um, so again, that is an easy way as long as you are consistent. You want to be consistent with that over the course, like I said, about six months. I would really do it like maybe once in the morning, once in the, in, in the evening when you get home, just to kind of get it, get it rinsed out and everything like that. Um, so again, guys, I gotta take a quick break, uh, but when we get back, we're gonna dive into some more solutions for things like sinus and chronic allergy issues uh, and what you can do about it right now. Because again, I know at least personally for me, it was one of those things that was a game changer um, for my overall health and well-being and just you know clear mind and, and, and getting rid of headaches and, and actually feeling like myself really for the first time uh, you know in my life from a health perspective feeling that way so I know this can be a really really big one for people so again we'll make sure that we go through um, all the different solutions uh, as soon as we get back if you want more information on who we are or what we do guys go to drswarren.com d-r-s-w-a-r-r-e-n Dot com. You can also submit questions uh, on our website as well that may be specific ones that you want to hear me talk about um, on our radio show um, or you want to hear me address via some type of video like on YouTube or things like or on our Facebook page. So you can also go there and ask questions, uh, you know, check out our videos and everything like that. If you want to set up an appointment either in our office or virtually, uh, again, doctorswarren.com, there's a place where you can actually schedule an appointment um, or you can give the girls a call that that number is 423-362-5360. Uh, those girls, uh, Mary Beth and Heidi, they're standing by and they can get you set up for that. So again, guys, this is Wellness Radio. I'll see you right back after the break. All right, guys. So going through, um, hopefully, you know, as we go through these, these solutions, again, guys, don't feel like you have to do all of them. But, you know, if you're somebody that suffers with these type of issues, then, you know, maybe choose like one and really hit that hard or two of them and, and hit it hard. Um, you know, a couple of these are pretty easy to combine. Um, so I think you could, you could try to knock them, knock them both out unless you're one of those people that are like, man, I need to know exactly which, uh, you know, tool I'm using that, that's getting rid of the problem. So you don't want to combine things. Uh, I get that too. You know, so, so just kind of pick and choose where you want to go as far as like helping the your issues with sinus and allergy problems. All right, so diving back into, I want to kind of dive back into, um, you know, off the radio, just on Facebook Live. I want to dive back into uh, the importance of, you know, getting some some things checked around the jaw or around the cranium or around the the, the sinus cavity and areas like that. So, you know, wherever you're at, so maybe you you know, maybe you're, you're already under the care of a chiropractor or uh, maybe you live somewhere else and you haven't seen one yet. Guys, I would recommend like going and finding a, a good chiropractor that can do some work, you know, either on the cranial bones, on the jaw. Um, some of them will even, you know, certain, you know, chiropractors or therapists can do work uh, even in the nasal cavity itself. There's an adjustment that you can use that actually opens up uh, the nasal cavity as well. So there's several different things you can do from a structural standpoint that I think, uh, you know, play a big role. I know at our office, I work on people's sinuses as well when they're getting adjusted. Um, I work on jaw to make sure that that's, that's doing well. And again, if you have more advanced issues, like maybe it's you or your husband, or maybe it's your kid, you know what are signs that your kid's not getting enough air when they're sleeping? They're a little bit different than adults. Like if your child wets the bed uh, consistently, they continuously wet the bed and you can't really figure out the reason why, it's usually because their body is trying to get uh, air in um, and so again, uh, wetting the bed is, is, is really associated with that. 
Number two is if you hear it like teeth grinding, so if they're grinding their teeth uh, at night, that is another sign they're probably not getting air in appropriately the way that they need to be. Um, if they're exhausted the next morning despite getting plenty of sleep, um, if you see things like chronic like bags underneath the eyes uh, that, that don't seem to go away even though they, you eat a healthy diet and you do other things as far as your lifestyle well, that is a sign you should probably get you know, the, the jaw you know, checked and everything. Like we went to uh, one with our kids and with Elijah since he's a little bit older, they were actually able to image um, and see how much air he was actually able to get in. Um, and so again, we were actually able to see that um, and see that well. So I do think that that's you know, uh, of, of great importance. And one of the cool things is if maybe you're a mom who just had a new baby or you got a little one at home, guys, definitely, definitely, definitely make sure uh, that you've had some chiropractic work done on your baby as well. Um, again, it's safe, it's gentle, it's specific, it's very, very easy. We see lots and lots of babies in our office, but again, you can find like an uh, like an ICPA certified you know uh, chiropractor in your area uh, that's really, really great at working with babies, and they can do things like make sure that everything's structurally aligned. It's very gentle, like literally when we're adjusting little babies, it's enough pressure to hold a dime against the skin, so very, very gentle um, but also you can get things like cranial sacral work done where you're working on the cranium and you're working on the sacrum that's really really big especially for little ones so I do recommend that as well to kind of prevent some of these you know later on like sinus and allergy issues or some of the issues with the jaw or some of the issues with breathing it really does help you know quite a bit so I think that's it that's that's important there now from the standpoint of what I was talking about as far as mold goes with the irrigation, um, again, saline solution using some, some organic like orange essential oils or there's a blend that's called Agrimax. It's a really good one that you can use. I think that's really important when you're doing that um, to irrigate on a regular basis and be consistent with it. I can't say that enough. I find people that are like, well, I did it like for a couple weeks. That's not enough to clear out, uh, again, some of the mold spores in there. So we wanna make sure that you're really consistent and we're gonna dive into the other solutions now. All right, guys, welcome back to Wellness Radio. I am your health expert, Dr. Nathan Warren. Um, and so I'm going over uh, really everything that has to do with sinus and allergy issues today. Just because it's been a big question in the office, I thought this would be a good topic for everybody. Uh, most people either for themselves or their kids or their spouse are having issues with that. So now we talked about you know what I think is the number one reason behind chronic sinus issues, dealing with mold spores in the, in the nasal cavity. Number two uh, was histamine, right? So what can you do as far as helping the body if you're somebody that suffers with histamine reactions. How would you know if you're somebody that suffers with histamine reactions? Well, let me give you a few examples. Are you somebody that if you get bit by a mosquito or if you get bit by, you know, maybe it's a bee or it's, you know, some type of like fly, if you get bit and then, or an ant and it swells up like a whelp, right? If you see you get whelps every time you get bit by something. If you see that, you know, you, you just seem to react on the skin really easy with topical things that, that are around you. Um, if you see like uh, even, you know, being around different, different things like maybe it's pets or it's certain plants or tree and you see like, you know, swelling of the eyes or the face, you know, those are histamine type reaction. If you see, if you have unexplained headaches where you've tried so many other things, there's a possibility that that, you know, is a histamine type reaction. So again, these are, these are things that, to keep in mind. Now, what can you do to help with that? So a few, uh, you know, the supplements that I recommend as far as helping to decrease histamine reaction are using natural antihistamine. So uh, these would be products that have things like Butterbur or Feverfew or Quercetin, uh, which you can find in like, you know, citrus fruits. These are, these are things that are very, very, uh, you know, um, effective at down-regulating histamine reaction. And so with kids, I like to use something called D-Hist Junior. So D dash H-I-S-T junior. Um, and that's a chewable one uh, that, that has no sugar in it. I think it's got a little bit of like erythritol um, to sweeten it, but it's just a chewable that you can use that has a lot of natural antihistamines in it that works really, really well uh, for kiddos. Um, and then as far as adults go, um, I like to use something like um, you can use 
uh, like Hista Ease and Hista Aid. Hista Ease by Designs for Health, Hista Aid by uh, Quicksilver Scientific. Um, the, both of those work fantastic and actually in combination work really well uh, as well. And guys, as I go over these, these are actually on our website uh, at doctorswarren.com. If you go to our shop, guys, these are all there um, and we can make sure that we get those out to you as well. Um, so even if you want to, if you go to the contact part of our website and you want some of these supplements that I'm talking about here, or if you want to recap, uh, you can always put in your name and, and your uh, email as well and we'll send out like a newsletter with it recapped as, as far as what to take, what to do if you're having sinus and chronic allergy issues, okay? Um, so histamine, like I said, uh, histaid, histaease, those are really, really great with lots of natural antihistamines. Vitamin C is a natural antihistamine. So you can actually load up on that. I would recommend kind of doing what you would do if you if you were fighting infection like viral infection or, or, or bacterial infection. Like you could do, uh, you know, vitamin C every two hours that you're awake and really uh, just load up on vitamin C. Um, it's a natural antihistamine and, and seems to work really good. If you're somebody who suffers with like, uh, you know, kind of like sinus and allergy headaches, right? Specifically coming from kind of congestion, um, I would recommend fever for you. Fever for you works phenomenal for sinus headaches, right? Now, now understand that you're still gonna have to say, okay, what are some of the root causes as so that I can prevent these sinus headaches from happening? But if you wanna get rid of one pretty quickly, use fever few, uh, seems to work good. It's a, it's a very safe herb to use as well. So um, again, another one that flies under the radar, excuse me, as far as uh, histamine reaction goes, is you can actually use something like grass-fed kidney. So like if you are somebody that is like, man, I take a deep dive into uh, ancestral living and you like to eat, you know, something like, you know, grass-fed kidney and eat some of those organ meats. Guys, it contains a high amount of DAO that I talked about that most people that have histamine reactions uh, have a damaged DAO. And so you can actually, uh, you know, consume something like a, like a grass-fed kidney um, or what you can also do is you can take it in supplement form. So like Ancestral Supplements makes a kidney uh, formula that has a lot of DAO in it that down-regulates histamine reaction quite a bit. So it helps to support your histamine reaction. Um, so again, that's from Ancestral Supplements, which is under our shop page at Doctors Warren. So um, those are some of the things I would use, you know, personally for uh, histamine type reaction um, and really help support that DAO uh, gene SNP that some of you guys may have. Now, the third one, looking into, uh, again, food sensitivity, you can always do a test. So um, I recommend though, if you do a test, like be under the guide of, of, of a practitioner or with you, if you're gonna kind of do it on your own, go into it with the mindset of understanding that, you know, number one, food sensitivity tests are not always 100% accurate, but they can highlight some of the most uh, inflammatory foods uh, that, that your body is in contact with, you know, or, or that you are consuming. And so it can be, so don't think of it as 100% a, you know, accurate, but it can at least highlight some things that you can at, uh, at least cut out for a period of time. The number two part of the mindset going into a food sensitivity test is recognizing that these are not, these foods that you see uh, a sensitivity to does not mean that these foods are inherently bad. And it also doesn't mean that you have to cut them out for the rest of your life. What it does mean though, is the most inflammatory ones that you see on there, you might need to cut them out for anywhere from a four you know, to 10 week period of time, uh, letting the body rest uh, from those foods. And then also number two, realizing that the key to a food sensitivity test is literally working on the gut and getting to root cause with gut issues, right? Um, it's, it's healing and sealing a leaky gut or gut permeability. It's also making sure that there's no, you know, frank pathogens that, that are affecting your gut lining. It's making sure that your secretory IgA uh, is where it needs to be, which means that your immune system isn't uh, overreacting or underreacting. So it's really checking those things, which will help overall with food sensitivity. As far as kids go, I will say this, if your kids have food sensitivities, 
um, you know, one really simple way to start trying to, you know, trying to help their bodies, uh, you know, kind of close up gut permeability and really kind of close up those tight junctions. I recommend something called Ion Biome, I-O-N, uh, Biome, B-I-O-M-E. And this is what, this is going to be a fantastic, uh, basically it, think of it as like a, it's like a, a mineral, uh, a loaded mineral water that, that again is very, very dense with, uh, with, with, uh, I think it's called like tetrahydrites or something like that. It's, it's such an interesting, you know, uh, word, but anyway, it's basically, they, they go deeper in the earth to pull out, you know, minerals. Uh, and again, that's something that has been clinically shown to close up tight junctions. Um, so I would recommend utilizing that. You can do like a like a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon before each meal with with you and your kids. It's something we do at home, just kind of as a ritual. The other thing, the reason why we use it is because it helps to really downregulate the biggest cause of gut permeability, which is exposure to glyphosate. Which even if we get the most organic diet in the world, or you're getting it from local farmers. We know that glyphosate is is the most ubiquitous chemical in our in basically on our planet right now because it's water soluble. Um, again, it's in you know about seventy to seventy five percent of our rainwater. Uh, you know, it's it's in our land. It's it's kind of everywhere. It's ubiquitous. So that being said, we want to make sure that we're closing up those tight junctions so that we're not getting the absorption of glyphosate into the body, which will help with those food sensitivities quite a bit. So that being said, I know I gotta go on another break real quick, our last break of the show. Um, so if you have questions, again, make sure that you're asking them on Facebook. I am live there, Doctors Warren, like and follow that page. Um, and also too, if you wanna set up an appointment, you can actually go to our website, doctorswarren.com. You can get that set up. Or you say, man, I just want to check you guys out, see what you're about. Again, we've got an archive of all of our past radio shows on there. We've got videos. We've got you know our YouTube videos. We've got blog posts, all that kind of cool stuff. And just let us know how we can help you and how we can serve you uh, You know, uh, just just in this walk of, of, of working on our health. So uh, in our health journey, if you will. But if you have any questions, let us know. Be live on Facebook. Ask your questions questions there. Again, guys, this is Wellness Radio. I'll be right back after the break. There we go. Sometimes it's hard for me to hear our engineer if, uh, you know, I, I can't, I can't always like, I'm like going on here and then I get like caught up in it in a thought and I forget. Uh, and he's telling me I got to go on break. So I got to listen to him a little bit better. All right, guys. Um, so as far as, you know, diving back into, uh, diving back into the food sensitivity thing, um, I do think this is one that can be a game changer. You know, I know there's some people out there that are like, no, food sensitivity test. I would rather do an elimination diet. And I'm like, listen, I feel like only people who've never done, like people who've never done an elimination diet recommend that as the first, you know, mode of action. Because um, number one, it's, it's, it's an absolute pain to do. Number two, it takes forever um, and I think if you have, um, I think if you have a, uh, you know, somebody who can kind of guide you through a food sensitivity test, I think you can really work your way around some of the inaccuracies with it. So like, especially if I'm working with like a kid, um, you know, with, with the parents of a, of a kid that has like skin issues or eczema or, you know, those type of things. Like I think a food sensitivity test is usually one of the first things that, that I, I use um, to be able to see, okay, what can we do to at least try to calm down the fire first um, as we're working on underlying root issues with that. And so um, I will say this though, like if, if you've done a food sensitivity test in the past uh, and like maybe your kid or you still have issues with like, let's say skin issues, or you're still having issues with, uh, you know, like I said, uh, you know, sinus and allergies, food sensitivities, those type of things, you may have to dive a little bit deeper. And from there, you'd want to do something like maybe it's a stool test, like a GI map, you know, PCR stool test, that'll kind of give you a, a whole breakdown of what's going on as well. Um, from a gut standpoint, you know, as I was talking to uh, a patient who just joined uh, our care, I think it was two weeks ago, and her husband, like over nine months, right? Nine months and went into four different doctors, specialists. Um, he's lost 90 pounds and he cannot figure out the reason why. Like, you know, consistently having these bouts of just like throwing up, uh, you know, can't stop, has to go to the hospital and the emergency room, um, and, and just kind of going through this vicious cycle over and over again. 
and they can't figure it out. And yet all the doctors are doing, they're doing scopes, you know, they're looking, they're doing, you know, uh, colonoscopies, they're, they're checking all of those things. But the problem is, is that they're not actually looking at the environment of the gut. That's one of my biggest, you know, pet peeves about the world of like gastroenterology is that they're not actually looking at the environment. Now I know there's probably, you know, a, a needle in the haystack. There's probably certain uh, gastroenterologists who are looking deeper, but the majority of them, they're not. They're looking at surface stuff. They're checking for ulcers and cancer and, and polyps and those type of things, diverticulitis. You know, they're checking for the, the kind of big things you can see scoping but they're missing out on the actual micro environment. And that's really where the root cause lies in gut issues or in systemic like autoimmune issues. So again, just keep that in mind. So, you know, if you do do a stool test, more than likely you're probably going to get, you know, even further than some of the best, you know, hospitals on the planet as far as looking into in the depth what is going on with the overall gut. So just keep that in mind, guys. So um, again, uh, as we dive into to you know kind of this last area here, I'm going to go over what I think is is really one of the best ways to eat like kind of an anti-inflammatory uh, diet as far as decreasing you know sinus and allergy issues uh, that can really help, uh, as well as what are some of the top histamine foods to stay away from. Um, so if you're trying to go that route as well, um, what does that type of diet look like? Because remember, your diet is a foundational principle to you getting healthy and well. So if we're not actually you know, focusing on changing the food that we're bringing in, you're really missing out a lot and you don't wanna just rely on you know, supplements uh, or medications you know, to kind of cover up an issue. Like food is, is, is a foundational principle to health. Um, and again, supplements should only supplement a good healthy diet. So what does it look like? What are some of the most inflammatory foods that I think you can put inside of the body and see negative results come from that? So number one is dairy. Number two is corn, soy. We're about to go live. All right, guys, welcome back to Wellness Radio. Uh, I am your health expert, Dr. Nathan Warren. And so I kind of want to finish up the show going over what is a proper anti-inflammatory diet and what are some of the top like histamine foods to kind of stay away from that can create damage and issues as far as like chronic sinus and allergy issues go. Um, and so the great news is, is eating like a more anti-inflammatory diet will be really, really powerful for, for any number of reasons, not just sinus and allergies. Um, but again, this is a really great place to go. Number one, again, going over some of the foods or some of the biggest, you know, uh, uh, kind of no-no inflammatory foods to make sure that you are, are staying completely away from. So we talked about conventional cow's milk dairy is an absolute, you know, bomb to your health. Why? Because it's all dead. You're drinking like a glass of, of dead. Like there's nothing alive in it. Think about why they have to like fortify it with vitamins and minerals. Like, you know, again, like raw milk is completely different than pasteurized homogenized milk. Um, but anyway, I would still stay clear of cow's milk dairy. I'm a bigger fan of if you're going to consume dairy, consuming A2 casein dairy. So that would be things like goat's milk or sheep's milk. Um, I think camel's milk is that as well too, which by the way is like unbelievably expensive. So I don't know if I would even go down that route. But that being said, those are some of the, the better ones to, to stay away. So stay away from conventional cow's milk dairy. And that includes cheese and yogurt and things like that as well. Uh, number two, things like corn, soy. Why? Because those two are mostly genetically modified, which is going to lead to, again, uh, glyphosate disrupting the tight junctions in the gut, which will create, number one, not only like histamine reactions and balance in, in, in your microbiome, uh, but also two, it's going to, uh, you know, it's basically going to lead to the body attacking itself. So autoimmune type reactions. So make sure that we're cutting those out. Obviously, you guys hear me talk all the time about cutting out rancid vegetable oils, uh, you know, corn, corn oil, canola oil, soybean oil, you know, all of those guys, make sure that those are cut out, vegetable oils. Uh, number, number four, making sure any processed sugar is going to lead to an inflammatory reaction. And then some of the top histamine foods that again, don't necessarily mean that they're bad, but that you may need to cut out for a little bit are some of the fermented things. So like, you know, some of the fermented things that, that again, can be really good for the gut, you may need to cut them out for a while. So like, you know, the kimchi, the sauerkraut, the kombucha, 
Uh, those are things that if you have histamine reaction will actually lead to even higher histamine reaction. Um, things like certain types of fish uh, can be you know, histamine producing. So you really got to make sure that you're aware of some of those top uh, things like certain nightshade vegetables. We know tomatoes can be a histamine producing food. So again, keeping that in mind, uh, even things like salsa, because again, it's a little bit fermented. That's something to keep in mind as well. So those are some of the top you know, histamine foods to make sure that you're cutting out. Eating a really anti-inflammatory diet, so like grass-fed, you know, pasture-raised meat, um, you know, good healthy vegetables like cruciferous vegetables, dark leafy greens, uh, some of the lower glycemic fruit like berries and apples and those type of things, uh, and really eating lots of herbs. Those are great for anti-inflammatory uh, type of uh, type of diet, right? And that's one of the best ways to do it. So that's why we always recommend like going more towards like a paleo-style diet. I think is a great way to go um, as far as down-regulating inflammation. So again, guys, I hope that helped as far as looking at sinus and allergy and chronic issues. If you want more information, check out drswarren.com. Uh, read more about us there. You can schedule an appointment there or you can give the girls a call 423-362-5360. Again, that's 423-362-5360. This has been Wellness Radio with Dr. Nathan Warren. I'll see you guys next week. All right, guys. So hopefully that helped as far as um, as far as looking at chronic and chronic sinus and allergy issues. Um, you know, again, I, I really want to give you guys the tools. So just as a, as a quick reminder, breakdown of everything in two minutes, so that that way you guys have it. And if you're just now tuning in, you can always go back and listen to it again. Figure out the root cause, right? So is it a mold issue in the sinus cavity? If it is, you want to irrigate that consistently. Is it a histamine reaction? If it is, you want to support that histamine reaction, you know, by doing things like uh, taking like a, a grass-fed, you know, kidney supplement or doing something like, uh, you know, dehis junior if, if it's your kids or, you know, his to ease or his to aid. Those are great uh, things and eat an antihistamine type diet, uh, which we just went over a second ago, cutting out those inflammatory foods and those fermented foods uh, as well that can create histamine. Number three, you know, could it be an issue with food sensitivities? If it is, cut out some of the main ones or you can do an actual food sensitivity test. It's up to you. Um, but the biggest one that I find with chronic sinus and allergy issues is cow's milk, dairy, cheese, you know, uh, milk, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then some of, the, some of the ones that fly a little bit under the radar, jaw shape, things like are there any hidden infections in the teeth? Have you had any root canals or wisdom teeth cut out that you need to explore a little bit more with like a 3D cone beam x-ray? Um, that's something to keep in mind. Or maybe you need you know, to check things like your nervous system and your spine, so finding a chiropractor in your area that focuses on structural correction. That means they're correcting the curvatures of the spine and really looking into that. Or maybe it's a baby that you need to get some cranial sacral work done on. Um, that's a really great step as well. So thinking about structure is always a good thing too. So I hope this helped you guys. Um, I know for me, this changed my life. Uh, again, if you guys have any further questions, please make sure you go to doctorswarren.com. There's a contact page there if you want more information on whether it's the information we talked about now or if you want to get our newsletters in the future, just kind of let us know uh, and we can make sure that we send that out. As always, love you guys. Hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you next time.